please take your seats. Let's start. Hello guys, welcome to my presentation, have you been stalking your server? Two things I would like to say for the beginning. Firstly, this is a beginner level presentation. So um, if you know about monitoring, you might probably get bored. So I won't take any offense if you decide to leave during the presentation because time is precious. Uh, the second one, my uh, business partner and friend was presenting a session at DrupalCon Sydney uh, this February and he realized that there was one guy sleeping in front of him during the presentation and he got really nervous because he thought oh my god I'm being boring you know people are sleeping once again I'm born in the Czech Republic I know that Czech beer is beautiful I know that Czech beer is beautiful so if you fall asleep I will take it as you had a really good night last night and I will take <laughs> no offense you need your beauty sleep <coughs> So just to introduce myself, I have been a sysadmin for 13 years. I'm from Czech Republic, lived in Prague many years, moved to Sydney 10 years ago. Um, and I think when I started working for the biggest telco in Australia, uh, which was about four years ago, uh, I became a DevOps engineer because we were in, uh, doing a lot of Puppet and continuous integration. And two years ago, I set up a company called Morphed together with my colleague, and we do Drupal services. Puppet deployment to the cloud, beautiful stuff. So monitoring is not my passion number one, but by talking to our clients, I realized that uh, it's very needed. Um, I don't like uh, going to servers without having any data to investigate. So this is just the bare minimum you need to know if you want to start with monitoring. So this is my first big presentation like that. So when I was doing a little research how to start, um, I realized that there is this one rule, the rule of three things uh, everybody recommends. Apparently, the, the, the three is perfect. Omne trium perfectum. Everything that comes in three is perfect. So even if you are presenting, we are supposed to give you three things. So two approaches. I will, tell, I will tell you these three things I want you to remember when you are leaving this room, or this is how it was done in the past, this is how it's done now, and this is what's the future. So I would like you guys to uh, know what monitoring is and why you want to start monitoring if you haven't yet. Then we will look at what tools are here ready to be used for you, even you haven't been exposed to that before. And the third one, uh, I will show you how easy it is to start. And I believe that you will be able to do that yourself this afternoon. So part one, what's monitoring and why you want to monitor? A broken glass. Uh, I worked as a, I work at a brokerage company here, here in Prague. I think it was in 2001 and uh, they wanted to get access to the New York Stock Exchange to be able to offer Czech customers to trade on New York Stock Exchange. They went, the bosses went to the US, were trying to get an API, didn't get any API, so they got a web interface which was meant to be used by a person, brought it back to Prague and say, guys, you have to parse the out HTML and basic, basically hook our own website, our clients trade through to the system uh, to pass it to the New York Stock Exchange and then back. So we spent maybe two months developing this SSL sockets, <laughs> a JavaScript parsing. It was a lot of fun. We started trading. It's like 2 p.m. afternoon because the time difference, New York Stock Exchange was opening 2 p.m. Prague time. And five minutes later, I have these three sales guys behind my back saying, we are not trading, something's broken. We, we are losing money. So we looked at the website and it completely changed. Apparently, the provider changed their web interface without telling us. Why would they, right? Because <laughs> we were parsing their HTML. So I realized that we completely underestimated the monitoring part. What we could do is, for example, 
having a little robot, you know, like trying to sell one little ticker every five minutes and then you know, they just like do a little operations every five minutes to get known that fact that it's broken in the morning, we would have much more time to fix that. Uh, so I had really bad three hours of my life with these sales guys behind my back. I managed to fix it, but I don't want to do that again. So I started monitoring. I don't want to scare you with this definition. This is the only definition I have, but I really like it because uh, it's actually not from the AT area, it's from nature conservation area. And it says exactly what monitoring is. It's a series of observations in time uh, carried out to show the extent of compliance or degree of deviation from an expected norm. I really like that one. So I'm going to offer you a few reasons you want to monitor. The first one is you want to know the bad news before your customers do, or at least your boss does, as my story. You want to scale up your servers in advance. Um, if you know that you are going to run out of uh, disk space, or if your CPU is getting hot, you use swap a lot, you want to know that. You want to tune up your application. Maybe there are extra modules enabled recently. Maybe you have more customers now and the application became slow and you don't know that, or you want to monitor that response time. You want to prove your uptime to your, to your customers. This is, let me uh, take just one slide detour. Um, this is called five nines. It's actually a unusual unit you can find on Wikipedia together with Sydney Harbor as a volume measurement or a bus as how many people used in London apparently. So five nines would be five minutes per year downtown, which is like six seconds a week. These numbers are very often in SLA of sysadmins and management wants to see them. And when we have our services in the cloud, we see these numbers. But I think they very often guess, uh, they wish that we don't know what this really means. I read somewhere this, this five nines, which is the six seconds a week downtown is actually, if you have a power grid um, supporting a city, this is, this is considered a uninterrupted service. But I think we remembered Google being down two minutes uh, three weeks ago, or Amazon having some, some troubles like 30 minute block as well recently. So let's go back to the reasons I can see. You want to minimize your downtown. It's expensive when you are not up and running. Also, maybe you want to capture your customer's uh, behavior. You know, like maybe they trade or use your application during lunch break or on Sunday afternoon. You want to know that to, to be ready. Maybe you had a ad running and uh, you want to analyze the success of the ad. You want to have data to diagnose. Um, when something happens, uh, you want to be able to go back and see what actually happened. So having some data, let, I will show you a few examples I find interesting. So uh, you can watch out for trends. Like here, we have a, a tape usage. And you can see it's growing slowly over the two or three years. So I can kind of see the speed and I know when I will need another tape. So that's a trend I can see from here. Then I can watch out for spikes. This is a low average monthly graph, and I can see there is a spike every week. It's probably Sunday night when there is the weekly cron job running, maybe uh, backing up data, dumping MySQL database, uh, gzipping log files. I want to know that, that there are these CPU spikes because maybe my application is, is hurt at that time and if there were some clients, they would have below average performance. You can watch out for irregularities. If you, this is an example of a memory usage graph uh, during a day. 
you can see that the server has one gigabyte of memory and suddenly you have like a spike when it got into swap so the server started swapping for instance you have gig is in swap and the application actually claimed much more memory because Linux overcomes memory it gives you more memory than it had hoping that the application won't use it all but the application actually asked for three gigabyte of memory you want to know about this because if you start swapping everything slows down in the better case and the another thing to watch for are thresholds this is like this usage this usage in percent so you know you don't want to get your file system full so there is a threshold of maybe 92% and you look at this graph and see hey i'm reaching this threshold this graph actually makes me nervous this is not good it's good to have it okay so it was just an example how you can use data you have collected let's have a look at areas you uh, want to monitor or can monitor so the first one uh, would be network right like do you have any rats in your data center do they like the cables there um, what's your network connectivity are there any drops is the speed what do you expect is the ping time what do you expect you want to know that then you want to monitor your server um, is it performing as expected like file system CPU is it swapping what what are the IO subsystem doing you know like uh, there was one uh, probably all of us know the smart uh, system for self-monitoring of hard drives which was able to tell us hey I'm about to die that like probably not being used anymore with SSD drives but uh, that was a good example of that then you want to monitor your services just just because your services are running it doesn't mean that they are replying the proper way maybe you have 503 um, getting back to the customer and you don't know about it even though it happens once a day you might overlook it in the log file but definitely you don't want to have the customer to have this experience and you can monitor you should monitor the application just because your site is up and running once again and your probe running a health check gives you okay it doesn't mean that the customer might see something like that sorry and I think you also want to monitor users. Maybe they are misbehaving. Maybe there are too many of them. Maybe you want to know about set up password aging. Okay, so that's these areas I want to I see as a sysadmin. I would like to monitor. And now I'm going to look at it from the Drupal point of view. So network, I think I will skip network because most of us uh, have services, maybe it's too rich to say, many of us have services in the cloud and the network monitoring is not really in our hands. We basically decide to trust one of these providers and say, okay, well. But we still wanna monitor our server. We still wanna monitor our services. This time we probably focus on the web server and the database, these two most precious parts of a Drupal stack. The application is our precious Drupal site, and the users here we go. We also we, there is the system users. Uh, actually, if you have a small server, a little LAMP stack somewhere, uh, people usually just log in once a month or once a fortnight. I actually saw people setting up a little script which sends you a email every time somebody SSH into the server because you don't mind the uh, the mail when it's actually you, but you definitely want to know when that happens. And it is not you, that means that your server is compromised. That's the one of the easiest, cheapest way, but you want to know that. And users from Drupal point of view, maybe suddenly there are too many users, you know, like your account got compromised and you know, like uh, there is this robot setting up user accounts just to use them for spamming later on. Okay. So that's the first part. Uh, and now I would like to show you the tools which are available. Let me check the time, I have to go a little bit faster. Um, so these are, Nagios and Munion are two, uh, 
tools which have been around for years and I believe they are the easiest to start with. And I also added something which is not actually a real monitoring tool, but I will explain why I put it there in a second. So Nagios. Nagios is an application for system, network, and infrastructure monitoring. It monitors and alerts when something goes wrong, and then it alerts again when it goes back to the normal state. It can provide monitoring of network services. All the protocol you can see there, many of them, of course, more. Uh, host resources, the disk usage, loads, logs, anything else you want, you basically anything else which can be executed via script. So we can use it for temperature, alerting. There are many plugins you can use, just like anything which is executable from shell script can be a plugin used from Nagios and get alerts based on it. Why did I put the pronunciation in the brackets there? Uh, I really like that. Uh, Nagios used to be called NetSaint, but there was another project having the same or similar name which got copyrighted, so they had to change that. So they decided to go for Nagios ain't gonna insist on sainthood. And Agios is a uh, saint in, in Greek, so that's why it's Nagios. It's really nice. So Nagios. So it alerts you when something goes wrong, then it alerts you when it goes uh, to the normal state again, via email, pager, SMS, you can connect anything once again when, when you, whatever you can talk to via command line uh, is executable, it can be your alert system. You can have different contacts, so web server or all Debian server alerts go to this person, all windows go to this person. You have notification escalation, so if the sysadmin does not acknowledge a problem, maybe it goes to his or her manager an hour later, you can set up these rules. Uh, you can set up dependencies, so apparently if the server died completely, you get an alert about the server being dead and there is no point in getting alerts about Apache is not available, MySQL is not available because the server must be up and running, right? It's a dependency. You can do the same with network, with many or network is not, say you don't have connectivity, you, why would you, why would you uh, monitor, um, alert on HTTP not being available? Makes sense. There is a concept of soft and hard state. So if there is a trouble, Nagios can, cannot reach a service. It tries several times before it actually goes to the hard state um, just to prevent flipping. So this is, when you install Nagios, this is like kind of like a control panel you get. Uh, out of the box, you can see that you know, like there is localhost as the only host it monitors because it, it's running on the server. It actually monitors by default when you install that. And there are a few services which you get like straight away, like current load of the server, current users, um, total processes running. Status like status like green is okay, uh, yellow is warning, and red is something bad happened. You, you can see where the service was checked the last time, how long it has been in the state, and how many attempts. Like so, s you see that one out of four okay, and this is it tried four times before it made it a warning. There are Nagios add-ons. The most important one, at least what I believe, is the Nagios Remote Plugin Executor, which basically enables the Nagios server to connect to a server you want to monitor, maybe your LAMP stack somewhere. And then there is this plugin which you can connect to any, any plugin you, sorry, there is this daemon you want to, you can connect to any plugin. You can write them yourself, like plugins are anything executable, shell script, Perl, Python, uh, binary. Um, and then do your checks on the box, but it's the way how Nagios can connect to the NRP and then execute all the checks locally on the server you wanna execute. But nothing is stopping you from having a, a plugin which actually checks your website somewhere else from this server, so but it's very flexible. And the other one, important, is this NSCA which enables uh, you to do passive checks. So if you have an asynchronous application, something which um, 
realizes, oh, I'm in a bad state, it actually has a way how to tell Nagios, to t because Nagios usually asks actively, but this time you, this server is, that something is getting wrong here, you have a way of pushing the message to the Nagios server to realize that. There is an integration with Drupal. You can see that this uh, Nagios is a module from Drupal.org. Uh, and there are a few um, components it checks. You know, is your Drupal site up to date? Uh, sorry, is the core up to date? Are the modules up to date? You have unreadable files directory. Um, are there any um, pending updates? You need to run updates. So this just behaves as another plugin to Nagios. Okay, so that was Nagios, which is to monitor an alert. And now let's go to Munion. Munion is actually in North mythology is a raven, one of the two ravens which brings information to the uh, god Odin. So it's an application which uh, provides network and system monitoring. This time its outputs are graphs, uh, which you access via a web interface. There are also many plugins available for me. It has master node architecture, so you have one Muin server which connects to each node you want to monitor, each server you want to monitor. On that, each server you want to monitor is a Muin node running. It's like a collecting daemon which basically collects all the data about that server and the, the master takes it usually every five minutes just and graphs it. It uses the RRD tool, which is a route drop-in database tool uh, designed to handle time series data. Uh, I'll show you, that one is very popular by other projects as well. Do I have this graph? I'll tell you why, because with the RRD tool, you, you always know what the disk footprint will be because it always has Daily, no, actually, uh, this is not the right slide, but that's daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly. You can see one year and nothing else. So you will never be bigger than this amount of file system data, regardless of how long uh, Muin has been up and running. This is an example of an uh, Apache uh, graphs. Like when, this is the Muin dashboard. When you go to the front page of one server, you can see that there is how many Apache, uh, how much time in Apache responding, uh, how many processes uh, Apache workers are running, how many are free, load average, and memory usage. There are about 30 of these when you install Munion. Just by installing it, you get 20 to 30 uh, of these, and you get historical data. So if I go to a detail of that, to the memory usage, so, as I said, it's day, month, uh, sorry, day, week, month, and year. So, okay, this is a day, it's not that interesting, but here I can see little spikes. Ooh, is my application leaking? Maybe. Or maybe there is a daemon being restarted every day, and it's just like normal <laughs> that it keeps taking a little bit more memory as it's running. But what's, what's interesting here, I can see from this yearly graph that this server had like a half a gigabyte of memory, and you know, like the red one is like memory in swap and was overcommitted until in June this year, somebody, probably me, realized that I'm running out of memory and doubled it and then it became normal. But you know, if I, I, I see what was happening, what has been happening with the server. Once again, there is a um, integration, there is a union uh, module on drupal.org um, which you can install and it will talk to, Munion will talk to it and you can get some, how many users are logged in, um, there, are, there are many, many. Uh, you can write your own plugins as well. I think this module lets you define your own plugins. This is my colleague playing with uh, like a plugin extension uh, in his sandbox and he created uh, how many content, like, so this is how, how many content types. Uh, so he has this amount of blog pages, pages, stories together. 
how many users you can see, or co uh, comments, it is like, for example, you can see it's growing slowly, probably being spammed slowly. So these two, Nagios and Munin, are not the same kind. They complement each other. Like, so Nagios alerts on thresholds, and Munin provides you the metrics. You look at Munin and say, what's different today to yesterday? But if you, if you put them together, you get an alert from Nagios, then you can go and look at the Munin graph and see, oh, I see, so the memory was slowly growing, 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 and then it died. So, and the last from these three I wanted to introduce you to, APC is not a monitoring tool. Every, probably most of you know what APC is. It's just a, it's like a opcode cache uh, to speed up uh, generation of the HTML code. Uh, instead of the PHP, instead of compiling it every time it's being accessed, instead of compiling index PHP of your Drupal site every time you access it, you just keep the opcode uh, in the memory and then just, uh, you don't compile it, you just execute it. But, uh, and it, it's not, it's not, it's inside your web server, it's not a web cache. Uh, but, uh, so people do have this installed, I'm pretty sure that it's like a normal thing, but what people usually don't know is that there is actually this one little script called uh, APC PHP, which comes with the, um, APC PHP package, and you can just copy it into your root of your web server, and you get straight away these graphs, and you can see, oh, how much memory is my Drupal site using? How many, what's the hit-miss ratio? Because when you install, uh, and I'm telling you this, guys, because I, have, I know that people use it, but very often they, um, they don't tune it up, and when you install APC, it, it comes with 32, on Debian and Ubuntu, it comes with 32 uh, megabyte of memory. And if you enable a few modules in your Drupal site, you will go over that like 40, 50 megabyte. And then you end up uh, this filling up and flushing, you know, every few minutes maybe. And say, how come my local machine is so slow? Well, because your APC cache is actually slowing you down by filling up, not having enough memory purging the pages and then, you know, like populating the cache again. So you want to have like a, a look at this slide now and then to find out what's going there. Do I have any fragmentation? Uh, has the cache overflown? You get more st uh, statistics about fragmentation. Uh, because I realized that this APC, what I call APC dashboard, I actually didn't find a name for that, is not a monitoring tool uh, b uh, which would comply with my definition. I also provide a, uh, provided a Munion plugin uh, which monitors APC. So here you can see these, these spikes uh, um, in memory. It's probably when it overflown, got flushed because you, know, you, you reached the maximum and then got populated again flushed, got populated again, flushed. I don't like this graph, it needs, it needs tuning. The same representation, but uh, with number of files as opposed to memory in the previous one. Okay, uh, so I wanted to introduce you these three uh, as the, the tools to start with, <laughs> but there are also other tools which are very popular. CollegD and Graphite, I believe people use together. CollegD kind of um, collects the data on each server you want to monitor, but it doesn't care about graphing it, and then you use Graphite to, to graph the data. Shinken is a Nagios binary replacement. Uh, I think Nagios has been around for 15 years, and the web interface looks like from 90s. Uh, I, I believe that Shinken is like a modernized replacement of Nagios. Sensu is a new a uh, monitoring tool uh, which is meant to replace Nagios as well. New Relic is a commercial, um, commercial monitoring tool which can monitor your server, but also inside your application by having a special plugin, even for Drupal, when you can see graphs what was happening. Uh, there are some freebies, but you don't have the historic data, I believe. And Pingdom is an example of a service which can 
monitor your server remotely. Is your web page up and running? It can send you an email when your page does not respond. You can go and register and get it for free, I believe. So, two parts gone. So, the first one was what monitoring was and why we want to monitor. The second one, I introduced you to a few tools. And now, I want to show you that it's easy to start. Let me check the time. So, to install these, it's easy. Like, I'm making an assumption. I learned that most people running their dev and stage servers use uh, Debian-based distributions very often Ubuntu. Uh, so this assumes Ubuntu uh, enterprise clients run um, Red Hat-based Red Hat -based distributions. Uh, but this is for Ubuntu I'm mentioning here. Another thing I would like to say, uh, when I talk about you start monitoring, I mean that you can actually start monitoring even your dev environment, even if you are running your LAMP stack in a Vagrant server, it still makes sense to put the Munion there, uh, maybe even Nagios there, just because when, it's, when the file system is running out of space, you want to know that. You don't want to like getting these awkward responses from your website, you're testing, no, not knowing what's happening. Uh, you might get an email before that happens. You want to see your APC cache is healthy and you get maximum speed from your Vagrant machine. So I believe that if, and even Munion, you know, like of course that it's a little bit silly to have the Munion server on the same um, machine you want to monitor on the LAMP stack because when it dies, of course, it's not being monitored. But you can still see from the graphs, from the metrics, what was happening before it died. So it still makes sense. I actually do it myself. So you just install a few packages. So Munion is the server, the, the, the central node, and node is the collecting one. With Nagios, you just install this one. With APC dashboard, you just take this PHP APC script, which comes with the package, and st stick it in your website. But to get a little bit out of it, you have to play with it. There are many guides uh, on the website you can find, which, which shows you how to do it. But if you, like me, provision your LAMP stacks again and again with a new project for every project. You don't want to do it again and again. So how can we automate it? Uh, because I'm, Puppet is one of my passions, I found a way how to put Puppet into this presentation. I'm pretty sure you guys know what Puppet is. Just with one sentence, it's a system for automating <laughs> system administration tasks. That will be the old definition, the new one is open source configuration management tool. I, I, I found a new one. It is like, in three steps, it's a declarative language for expressing the system configuration. So you're, you are not defining the steps, how you install this package and then this package, and but you install, you describe with the declarative language, what's the state you wanna have. So this is what I wanna get. I can define some dependencies, for example, that I have to install the Apache package before I start the Apache service. But if you don't say, if you don't specify these dependencies, it just describes what you want to have. I want to have these packages installed, these services running, and these files being deployed there. So that's the first. Um, it's a client and server for distributing that system configuration. These days, uh, there are more and more people, even enterprises, instead of using the client and server uh, model, when client is each server you want to provision and server is the Puppet master, uh, you actually just get the Puppet code and apply it locally on the machine. It's a perfectly valid case, especially in your Vagrant machines, that's how you would do it. And there is a library which realizes the, the configuration, basically the executors. It might be one for Windows, one for Linux, uh, it's basically say, I want this file to be in this directory. Uh, there is a library which takes care of that. An example of uh, Puppet Manifest. So here I'm saying that I want to install Munion node package, ensure that it's installed. And then I want to service Munion node, enable, so if the server reboots, 
uh, it will get uh, automatically started and ensure that it's running at the moment I'm executing this, this manifest, but require the package union node to be installed first before you handle this service. So I just wanted, to, aside of telling you what monitoring is, I also wanted you to get your hands dirty slightly with playing with Puppet a little bit, if you haven't. Um, so I created like a little repo, which you can clone to your dev machine, even if it's running a, your LAMP stack already, it's designed not to clash with it. Then you run Puppet apply on that code, and then you should get your monitoring tools. So the first step, you clone this repo. You can go have a look. You can download it, of course, as well, but uh, this is the Git way. Then you run puppet apply on that code you just got down. So you say puppet apply. So it's applying the, the language, which, which, is, which is in this directory. So you can go and browse it. And, uh, when you're done, it will take a few minutes just to install these packages. You get Union, you get Nagios, which will alert you to your email address. I will show you how to change it. And you get APC dashboard. Um, you can have a look at. So in that repo, you find this manifest PP, which is the main file which describes what's happening there. I'll just go quickly with you, uh, because I want to show you how to, so here I'm provisioning Munion, and as a parameter I'm telling, I'm saying that I want the basic authentication to use user Munion and password Prague 2013, so you can change it and apply it again, so you get your own password protection. The same with Nagios. Uh, here you can put your contact email, providing that your machine is capable of del delivering email. You can just put your Gmail, whatever you use, and you will start getting email alerts from Nagios. And the password you use when you connect to the uh, web interface. Nagios admin is the default. Uh, I didn't change it. That's the default which comes with the Nagios package. And here is how I deploy the APC uh, that's where I take it from and write it to the root of the web server. But, and I restart Apache. I don't do it if it's there already. And I require the PHP, APC, and Apache packages to be installed. So, this is a easy way for you to start monitoring if you want to. You can just like run these three commands and uh, play with it. Let me check the time. I think we have a few minutes left. So, some fun. Can anybody tell me what's wrong with this? This is a memory usage by day. What, what can you see? Shut down already. Shut down? Memory leak. Memory leak? Yep. Yes, I would read it the same way. So, shut down, I would say it's more likely that might be memory leak, and then the Munion itself got killed. The, the, the collector process might have been killed because of the memory not being available. Maybe the server even like crashed before somebody rebooted it, and then it came, and it's probably going to happen again. So you need more memory, or you know, you want to tune your applications. And the next one. So this is swap in and out during a day. Good, not enough memory. Once again, something is happening at 12 in the afternoon. Suddenly, you can see pages going into swap in and out, in and out, in and out, and then again in and out, in and out. You want to know that this is too many. You want to fix it. Okay, so this is the repo I, I was addressing in the in the in the code, puppet code. I will try to show you 
what do you get? I started a background machine just when we were starting. Let me see whether I can handle it. So. Font. So here, I just started Wagner machine. I destroyed the old one, started the Wagner machine. So I got a basic Ubuntu machine, nothing, nothing there. Then I entered inside the machine. So I'm just like logging into my server. That's where you probably will start. And I'm running install git to be able to clone the repo. I could have downloaded via wget, of course, but I, I like having, having the history. And then, as I said, I'm running puppet apply, telling when the manifest is. And you can see that the puppet is running provisioning packages, installing Nagios, deploying Nagios configuration. So you can play with this and see what's going on and then go to the manifest, which is pretty simple. I tried to put comments in and keep it as simple as possible for, for you to get your hands dirty and play with it. So, and here it finished. So let's see. I did it exactly at 12. So this is the repo on GitHub with the instructions there. So you guys can just run them on your machine. So I opened this page before it was ready. So now there should be one hour of statistics. So you see it started just uh, an hour ago. So you will get more and more. And then I have Nagios, which uh, the local host is here. And you can see you get some services. Current load, current users, disk space. It's red because the vagrant, um, the Nagios believes that there is not enough space. The, va the vagrant shares the file system, but it's false positive, I believe. Uh, HTTPC, SSH. So, and it will alert you to your email address. You can provide in the manifest. And then, you get your APC. There is nothing graphed yet because um, because there um, is no website. It's like an empty Ubuntu box. But you can see, I think there is how much memory you have. So this is what you get. Any question? You're saying that uh, Shinken has a newer UI than, uh, than the Moonin, right? I was saying that Shinken is a uh, binary re replacement for Nagios. That's how one of the developers basically decides to make bigger changes. The other Nagios developers didn't like that, so he forked that project and created Shinken. But I haven't touched that one myself, uh, but uh, it, from what I saw from the screenshots, they look different, more modern than Nagios does. Nagios is kind of. The question was, was, uh, was where, what are the downsides of uh, the Shinken with regards to? I have no ex experience with Shinken. I just, uh -huh. I just know that people use it. Okay. And one more thing, are there any third party services that can be used instead of uh, maintaining local uh, installation, etc.? Yes, I think I showed you like the uh, New Relic, for example. It gives you good um, start with, um, you get like, like five different server graphs, like CPU, loads, memory, a file system, and you get insight into your PHP as well. You can like, see how much time was spent in the database. There is some, f I don't use it myself, but I have used it before. Uh, in, inside an enterprise organization, but I, I believe that even as a 
user, you can just register and get some freebie. You won't just get, have the historic data. You will maybe have only last 24 hours, but you can still connect your site to it and play with it. But this presentation was designed for your development servers, not for production. So that's why I didn't bother about third parties. I just wanted you to give a quick way of play with that locally. Anybody else? Uh, okay. Is there a free open source alternative to Pingdom? Uh, Ping Pingdom has a great service, uh, but it costs a little bit of money. If you have a lots of servers, it costs a lot of money. And actually, everyone in this room, if we just monitored each other's servers, it would be kind of free. So I'm looking for an open source solution to Pingdom. Mm -hmm. So you can use Nagios exactly for that. Nagios has Pink integrated in it, and Nagios has HTTP, HTTPS plugins. So you can have one Nagios server and just add another host to monitor. Uh, you can, you can put the Nagios server on your LAMP stack. If, even if you have one LAMP stack somewhere in the cloud, you can put Nagios on it and, and monitor other services from there. So that's what I would do. I, I actually do that. Thank you. Anybody else? Is there any way to, um, to monitor like the update status of Drupal, like, like having different versions of modules that need to be up updated? Yes, the, uh, on that slide covering, covering uh, the MU Nagios, Nagios model, mo module, I'm nearly there, sorry for flipping. This is Munion, it's nearly there. So I believe that here. All right. Yeah, pending version updates, pending Drupal module updates. That's probably what you are after. So you basically get an alert if there's any update pending. That's correct, yeah, uh, it, it behaves as a plugin for Nagios, so it becomes into warning or critical state and sends you an email. All right, thank you. Anybody else? Oh. Thank you. Uh, just a quick question. Um, I'm always paranoid about performance, um, so I wanted to ask you if you have any experience with, um, I don't know, the daemon processes on the client servers that somehow interfere with the performance on the client server? Well, of course, it costs you something. The, say the Munion monitoring daemon keeps collecting data. Nagios keeps connecting and executing scripts every five minutes. But my point of view is like, <coughs> already when you are designing your application, you want to make this a part of the greediness of the application. You need it. You don't want to save 5%, how much it can be on monitoring just to make it run faster, get like faster CPU or more memory, but don't be stingy on, on these. Uh, I think that the new relic which goes inside of PHP, there are, it slows down by order uh, of percent. I think it's under 5%. I'm not too sure here, but you can see that, but it, it's, worth, it's worth it. You get more data. so. You shouldn't be stingy on that. You want to tune up something else, but have the monitoring. Is that it? Okay, guys, it was my pleasure. Thank you. Please go and uh, rate my presentation. I'm curious. Thank you. <laughs>